they raced us in the motorcade to Air Force One, which is already, the stairs were gone. They got him up through the quick in, internal stairs. They threw us on the plane, slammed the doors. We rolled a takeoff, and then the Pentagon was hit. At that point, there was no way for George W. Bush to go back to Washington. I know he took a lot of flack for not going back, but you, you can't take Air Force One into a city where a major building like the Pentagon is in flames. We flew for hours on Airboard, Air Force One in the first, in the bulkhead wall of every cabin, there's a television set recessed into the wall. And back in those days, Air Force One could get a real shaky signal from the ground. And we watched the first tower fall, and then the second. We knew we weren't going home anytime soon. We actually refueled it in Louisiana because the plane was out of fuel. We had to get fuel. But they still didn't know where to go. We had jet fighters on, every, on either wing. My job at that point was to ask Andy Card, and they let, they let the cameras go up and get a picture of the president on the phone back to Washington. He had a couple of secure phone lines, but he had no way to do much of anything either. He's very frustrated. We land in uh, Louisiana to refuel and I fear that they would kick us all off the plane. Mm. And I said to Andy Card and to Ari Fleischer, you can't have the president fly off into the wild blue yonder in a moment of national crisis. You've got to have the press there. Andy Card allowed me to stay, get back on the plane after the refueling. So the only way I could get that pooled information back to the other reporters who were still on the ground in Sarasota, they weren't going anywhere for days, nothing was flying, and to get it to the broader public was to use this little Motorola flip phone, uh, open it up, call ABC News, and they'd put me on the air with Peter Jennings. And in knowing that the tone of my voice, the way I described what we were being told would, would reflect what we were hearing from the president and from the staff. I explained who the president was calling, uh, what he had ordered, uh, that his, uh, he had told us in, in Louisiana that he would, um, that uh, they would bring him to justice. They, they will go after those who are responsible for this. We will show the world. He also argued privately that he had to get back to Washington because he did not want the world to see the United States government crippled, 